Okay, so I think it's time and let's start uh, April 23rd, um, Indo Ag Science Cafe. Um, everyone, welcome to the cafe. So today um, we have again, you know, um, one presentation and an open up for discussion. And then the first part is going to be recorded and then the discussion will be, will be closed meaning private. But uh, um, again, I like to do interactive discussion after the presentation. So just wanted to remind you have a you know, capability to mute and unmute using the mute icon. Um, so use that effectively. So why is somebody, some, somebody is talking, um, mute, mute your um, microphone and then unmute when you speak up. And then you're welcome to use video too, you know, that, that's up to you. Um, uh, so we have, um, uh, today we have Murakachira is going to talk about his uh, CFD approach, air current um, um, analysis and very exciting engineering stuff. And then May um, Cafe is currently to be announced, TPA. Um, the reason is that is because um, we wanted to avoid the conflict with the uh, indoor indoor agpon conference, and many of you might be going to that conference. So, so that's why the original schedule was twenty second, and now uh, we will announce soon, uh, today or tomorrow as soon as um, we we figure out what would be the best. And then after that, um, uh, we have one uh, company presentation from uh, Plenty, and, and then uh, we will schedule more later. Um, all the PIs uh, or the academic members, uh, founding members of this cafe are currently quite busy for the grant, <laughs> um, but we will be better uh, managing our time soon. So anyway, okay. Um, so uh, title of... Um, Murad's presentation is environmental uniformity and climate control in plant factory or indoor farms with artificial lighting. Um, so the Murad Kachira is a professor at the University of Arizona Controlled Environment Agriculture Center. And he's actually the director of that center too. Very interdisciplinary program. And uh, he's gonna talk about um, that his work um, so, Mura, if you can share your screen. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see. Yep. Can we see? Mm -hmm. um, okay. The full screen is project oh. right here. Yep. Okay. Right. Beautiful. <clears throat> Great. Um, Thank you, Cherry, for inviting me for, for the cafe today um, and um, also to other uh, leaders of the, the cafe, uh, Carrie Mitchell, as well as Eric Runkel. Uh, you all, I think, are doing a great job in terms of bringing um, people together here uh, in this platform for information sharing uh, in this really uh, in an informal environment to um, to share uh, uh, valuable information. So I appreciate uh, your effort as well as your invitation. Uh, I'm happy to be uh, with you today, this morning, and I would like to say hi to everyone joining uh, also um, through the web. Um, so I uh, I was given uh, uh, this uh, actually uh, title to present. Actually, I, I chose uh, to present uh, about this title. Uh, this is something that we have been working on for a while in terms of uh, evaluating uh, uh, environmental uniformity in the past with greenhouse systems. Uh, but in the recent past, uh, uh, we have been really focusing on the, uh, the vertical farm systems uh, for environmental uniformity uh, analyses. Um, I would like to uh, say that I would like to acknowledge actually um, some of my team members in my lab. Um, uh, I will be presenting uh, mainly their work uh, in this presentation. Actually, uh, Ying Zhang is uh, here with me 
uh, in the office. Ying is my uh, PhD student uh, working on the uh, CFD modeling uh, as well as some of the energy simulations for the <clears throat> vertical farm uh, uh, energy consumption analyses. Um, Brian Kaplan uh, has been uh, uh, in has been working on the um, uh, vertical farm system uh, light intensity um, and CO2 optimization uh, studies. Uh, after completing his work, uh, uh, he started his new position with Gotham Greens in their uh, uh, Chicago uh, uh, facility. I also would like to acknowledge uh, our uh, sponsors uh, who provided us support uh, for our uh, work uh, that I'm going to present in this uh, presentation. I would like to say that as I look at future, I really uh, see that a field-based agriculture uh, uh, and controlled environment-based based agriculture will be integrated, um, and they will be a complementary uh, uh, agricultural a platform uh, to provide uh, food uh, for 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 the for for people. Uh, so uh, there will be applications where we'll see um, a field for, uh, agriculture providing the food, but there will be unique applications, unique localities uh, with unique markets uh, that the vertical farm will really have an opportunity and contribute uh, uh, to that future. Um, when it comes to indoor agriculture systems, um, as you know, we have large scale operations in warehouses and I am just showing some of the uh, large scale operations uh, 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 today in, in, in US. Um, there are some uh, differences in their design uh, features, as you can see some using hydroponic systems, some um, deep water culture systems, some using NFT-based systems, um, so they're hydroponics, but there are some similarities, some differences. Also, the way uh, the crop is grown is slightly uh, different, as you can see, some horizontal, actually uh, multi-tier systems, as well as uh, those with the vertical-based uh, uh, systems. And some are stationary uh, shells uh, they are used, and some with uh, movable, portable uh, uh, transportable actually uh, production uh, uh, units are also uh, used in these systems. Um, <clears throat> there are also container-based, smaller size container-based uh, farming systems, uh, shipping containers converted into a, an indoor uh, vertical farming-based uh, operation. In any of these uh, indoor agriculture systems, um, of course, for crop production, there are uh, inputs we need to consider, and we have energy required, water, uh, carbon dioxide, fertilizer, and, and labor are the major key uh, input variables for the uh, crop production. And plant actually uses these uh, resources for their physiological activity, and we have photosynthesis, they, all, they also have respiration, and we have energy mass exchanges between the crop and the surrounding environment. And as a result, we have, as an output, as outputs, we have edible biomass, non-edible biomass, some heat uh, uh, because of the lighting systems, as well as a, a, the water evaporation or transpired water uh, in the atmosphere that is also an outcome of the system, as well as the uh, oxygen. So when we look at the, the production, and um, especially to have comparison between different types of systems, um, uh, and also from the operational point of view, and the economics point of view, uh, we need to really consider these outcomes, outputs, as well as the inputs, in a sense that, you know, uh, using the metric of productivity, in terms of outputs versus inputs uh, uh, should be the metric uh, to make a decision in terms of the efficiency of these production systems as well as their cost uh, factors when uh, we consider the operational uh, characteristics. So the bottom line is actually to look at the resource use efficiency. This resource use efficiency can be uh, actually uh, broken up into uh, different components. We can consider maybe water use efficiency, 
amount of water used per uh, yield output or maybe electrical energy used for uh, lighting or the uh, heat, uh, HVAC systems or maybe the fertilizer uh, can be uh, considered to uh, break up these individual uh, resource uses and resource use uh, efficiencies. <clears throat> um, some of the, uh, the features of indoor uh, plant uh, uh, factories, uh, uh, vertical farms, they are fully controlled environment uh, so we can actually have full control of the environment in that system. Um, they are highly closed, confined environments, artificial lighting is used, um, and we can produce food um, anywhere uh, we want, of course, with a cost uh, associated with that. Uh, the advantage is also being free of pesticide contaminants um, and high resource use efficiency is possible when you consider the land use, uh, the water use, and also the CO2 use for, for, the, uh, for the production. Some of the uh, challenges uh, we uh, see and we hear um, uh, are associated with the um, initial uh, investment cost required for the equipment and the facility. Um, uh, currently, um, a limited number of crops being grown, uh, mostly leafy crops, shorter crops. However, uh, there, is, uh, there is interest uh, from the industry to actually to grow um, uh, fruiting crops in these systems as we look at as we look at future or uh, for unique uh, markets and for demand um, one of the challenges that we hear a lot uh, actually is the um, the challenges with the um, the environment non-uniformity in this uh, production space when it comes to air temperature relative humidity uh, air current speeds or co2 distribution in this three-dimensional uh, domain. If you consider this large warehouse with multiple inlets being in one location or wall, uh, bringing a conditioned air from one location and pushing that towards the other wall, maybe where the exits might be, uh, you may you can imagine the non-uniformity without doing any actually um, analysis. And also their distribution into each layer uh, could be challenging and as we consider also the limited headspace in these multi-tier uh, systems. So because of these uh, challenges uh, with the air distribution uh, non-uniformity, uh, we may see, we're seeing uh, its effect on the photosynthesis as well as the transpiration rates or uh, maybe leading to uh, potential crop uh, disorders. So we really need to um, consider um, optimizing or improving uh, the, uh, the, the heating, ventilation, air conditioning systems and air distribution systems in these indoor vertical farms so we can um, achieve this uniformity as well as provide a, uh, a, a desired environment for the crops to, to grow and, and perform, uh, as well as uh, considering the, uh, the optimization for the, uh, uh, the resource use. Um, so, um, Knowing this uh, challenge and the interest uh, also in the vertical farms, uh, about a year and a half ago, actually about two years ago, we started planning of these uh, uh, research facility here uh, at the Controlled Environment Agriculture Center. And uh, we started our first experiments about a year and a half ago. Uh, this was a collaborative effort actually with our efforts here, some minimal amount of funding from the university of Arizona, as well as uh, 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 donations and from our collaborators, and later on with some uh, some uh, funding provided for the uh, experiments that we actually we have been conducting. So this is a 750 square feet uh, uh, indoor growing space with with two rooms. Um, they are individually controlled, same hardware. We have. A three layer, uh, tier, three tier system forming uh, one rack, and we have two racks in each room. These are uh, four uh, feet by eight feet uh, deep water culture systems, uh, each rack sharing a 300 gallons of uh, nutrient tank. Um, we have an LED lighting system. Uh, it is uh, an Illumitex LED lighting system that we use uh, about 80% red and 15% blue and the remaining portion is mostly green. Uh, and um, uh, we are able to change our light intensity in this facility to control that. Uh, the, the spectrum uh, uh, 
uh, is not uh, controlled. But we have also other sensors that monitors the environment, not only the aerial environment, but also the, the root zone environment for its key variables. In addition to these, uh, we also monitor, depending on the, uh, the research or the experiment, we monitor the crop as well as the energy used in the system individually for the LED lighting system energy use as well as the, uh, the air conditioning system energy use and other hardware that we have in this uh, facility. It's not only a research facility for us to generate the data we need, um, but also it's an educational facility for our students to have hands-on experiences. So since the project initiation, actually two, gradu two students graduated uh, uh, with their research. Actually, Alex Feldman is now with the Chiba University Plant Factory Association. They're working as a researcher. He's currently, I think, moving for another position. Uh, Brian Kaplan, uh, is with Gotham Greens. Uh, currently, I have, we have Becca Waller, uh, another uh, master's student in my lab, working in the facility. But we have other undergraduate students also helping uh, with, the, with the effort in these facilities. So as I mentioned, the one uh, challenge with these uh, facilities is the, uh, the, the non-uniform envi environment and the need for an effective air distribution system. As you can see, some of these facilities are using uh, maybe fans uh, trying to push air down to, to the, uh, uh, the the tier multi-tier system, or maybe a perforated tube, as you can see, position between the aisles trying to push air downward. But you can imagine the challenge actually to bring these air into each layer in a uniform uh, fashion. And you can see sometimes a it, uh, a, a growing shelf is actually uh, using only a small space in that whole warehouse with some vertical fans here integrated, but there's a huge space that is also being conditioned uh, to provide that uh, in conditioned environment for the crop. So there are, there are some uh, 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 challenges as we have been observing in these uh, facilities. So when it comes to um, airflow, air distribution, uh, a, um, uh, one thing that we should consider is the air current speed. It has direct effect on leaf and canopy boundary layer, affecting transpiration and evaporation, uh, as well as the leaf temperature is affected and carbon dioxide exchange and availability is, is affected by the air current speed. So if you look at the actually the plant surface, we, we, we see uh, plants, uh, we, uh, we, we look at guard cells and we have stomatal ap aperture, and um, we can um, consider the uh, electrical analogy, Ohm's analogy for water diffusion. We have potential driving force for the water diffusion that is pretty much driven by the, uh, the vapor pressure of the air versus the, uh, the leaf, the vapor pressure inside the stomatal cavity. So this is being the uh, potential difference uh, or the driving force and of course for this uh, potential difference uh, for the uh, water against the water diffusion we have also resistances these are associated with stomatal resistance as well as the bio uh, the aerodynamic resistance in the boundary layer so the air current speed air actually flow effects there has a direct effect uh, on the uh, uh, boundary layer uh, resistance um, as we increase the air current speed, uh, the boundary layer becomes thinner. When the boundary layer becomes thinner, this means that we have less resistance uh, for water diffusion or more conductance for the water diffusion, uh, uh, for example, you know, elevated or increased uh, transpiration rates. We want to control, of course, the transpiration rate. We, so much of that could be a challenge. So little of that, so a small amount of transpiration should, could be also a challenge. So we need to properly manage this boundary layer as well as the transpiration mechanism. Um, as, as you can see, the aerodynamic resistance actually is also reduced as we uh, increase the uh, air uh, current speed uh, in the boundary, uh, boundary layer. Um, so, um, uh, there is direct effect of inadequate and non-uniform airflow uh, in uh, crop production uh, spaces. Um, uh, the st stagnant, stagnant uh, boundary layer 
can cause uh, issues in terms of the transpiration rates uh, leading to potential crop disorders. One of the challenges that we hear a lot is the tip burn issue, uh, especially with certain uh, lettuce varieties. Um, this can happen when the, the growth rate of the crop is actually faster than the plant's capacity to uptake uh, calcium or nutrients to deliver calcium in the, to the uh, leaf uh, tissues. And if the variety has more um, closed actually leaves uh, and with the uh, lack of air turbulent flow uh, uh, in about the plant canopy, then this may lead to uh, tip burn occurrences, really limiting the uh, quality and marketability of the uh, production or the uh, the uh, the operation. Um, um, it, it, there are effective strategies already demonstrated when it comes to greenhouse uh, structures and systems. For example, using vertical airflow fans has been shown to have uh, actually effect on the um, uh, on uh, on the tip burn issues and preventing tip burn uh, issues. Actually, um, so. We considered this in our uh, earlier studies with Ying, and Ying focused on a, a single shelf uh, design uh, where we thought that we could maybe use this idea to bring vertical airflow with perforated air tubes pushing air down into the canopy. You're looking at um, um, uh, 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 the velocity distribution or air current distribution uh, on on the plant canopy surface with the different uh, numbers of perforated tubes actually integrated uh, between the uh, LED lighting systems. In this case, we were targeting a certain uh, air current speeds with, uh, which has been shown to have effect, positive effects to uh, reduce the, uh, to minimize the tip burn and, and uh, leading to uh, proper air ex proper exchange rates and photosynthesis for plant canopies. So in this case, we were mainly targeting 0.3 meters per second up to one meters per second at the boundary layer, boundary surface at the, uh, at, on top of the canopy uh, surfaces. And we were interested in the uniformity in each uh, case, basically. So using this technique, the simulation modeling effort actually enables us to look at the details of the uh, key variables such as air current speed, temperature, CO2 levels in any given design to evaluate an existing uh, configuration and system as well as maybe uh, uh, coming up with alternative uh, design features and scenarios that could be implemented to the uh, air distribution systems or heating, ventilation, air conditioning systems. So you're looking at now from the side view of these perforated tubes pushing air down into the uh, canopy. Um, so among these uh, four, four cases actually evaluated, we observed that uh, actually the case two, having only two perforated air tubes with different uh, air uh, in, uh, uh, injections in different, with different angles, uh, were providing the uniform environment we uh, uh, wanted in terms of air temperature distribution uniformity as well as the uh, air current speed range that we wanted on the uh, canopy surfaces. So this design is, is, can be used, uh, for example, for uh, multi-tier systems where we have uh, sufficient head space between the LED lighting systems as well as to the canopy surfaces. This could be, uh, this might be <clears throat> uh, 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 this might be uh, challenging if you have really, really a uh, small uh, headspace uh, in the production uh, space. So uh, design features and physical dimensions of the system should be considered maybe with alternative ways of pushing air down to the canopy. So Ying then um, uh, focused on um, analyzing the whole warehouse uh, uh, designs. Uh, here we are looking at a little a larger uh, facility. Uh, you can see the ground uh, footprint of the facility being evaluated here with uh, uh, five uh, uh, tiers and um, six uh, uh, towers where we have air inlets coming from one wall and exhausted from the other wall. Uh, uh, 
uh, in this other case, we are interested in uh, the, the to bring the income to uh, the condition air from the ceiling as well as rejecting it from the ceiling. Um, incoming air coming from the ceiling, pushed from the side walls, and here we have incoming air coming from perforated tubes between alternating aisles, and then the warm aisle uh, is actually used to eject uh, or reject that heat from the the ceiling. Uh, and circulated through the um, uh, road to the uh, air conditioning unit. And here we have actually another unique design where we are really focusing on localized uh, climate control to bring the conditioned air uh, in a horizontal fashion uh, um, between the LED lighting system and the plant canopy in a fashion that we are sweeping actually the canopy surfaces uh, with, this, uh, with this design. So, um, um, in in the in this in these models, uh, we are also able to uh, include plants' uh, existence in this uh, production uh, uh, space uh, by considering their um, uh, transpiration uh, rate, uh, and uh, also, if you want, we can also consider their um, the size and uh, uh, architecture uh, using the porous media approach. So we're looking at air velocity distribution as well as air temperature distribution for each of these cases. As you can see, uh, we observe uh, non-uniformity for both uh, variables, uh, and these are the actually slices, planes shown relative to the uh, overall uh, production space, in this case zero. So I'm just gonna cruise through this. You can see, again, non-uniformity existing with this design, with the ceiling in intake and then rejecting from the ceiling as well as the um, incoming air from ceiling uh, rejected from the sides, as you can see, non-uniformity. <clears throat> Here we have uh, perforated tubes between aisles and then uh, ejecting from the roof. Um, and here is our uh, a unique case where we have horizontal air flow pushing air uh, just above the canopy to create that, to maintain that desired ranges of velocities just above the canopy surface. Mm -hmm. Um, as well as the uniformity of the um, the uh, air temperature in that production space. So uh, these are the um, types of uh, um, studies or uh, analyses we are able to uh, perform using these uh, computer simulations. Of course, we also have experimental data to validate some of the uh, um, the key variables that are uh, out outcomes uh, uh, of these uh, uh, model uh, results. Um, in, a, in a different uh, research, we are focusing on uh, the uh, energy consumption of the vertical farming systems and, and potentially uh, evaluating, comparing different uh, uh, maybe control strategies uh, for the uh, energy consumption and, and focusing on resources efficiency. In this case, we are using a, uh, a software called Energy Plus. This is an integrated building energy simulation model where we can consider multi various uh, input variables to uh, evaluate the uh, energy consumption of the vertical farming systems. For model validation, we use our uh, uh, vertical farming research facility. As you can see, um, we have two experiments uh, conducted and we are able to uh, uh, monitor the heating, uh, energy, co energy consumption, cooling, the amount of energy used by fans, as well as the total energy. So this is the actual usage, and you can see the total uh, usage uh, simulated versus actual usage. And you can see we have some uh, discrepancy, some error factor uh, there in terms of our modeling effort for this energy consumption. We are, uh, we are really constantly focusing on how we can improve these uh, models and their prediction uh, accuracies. But this was, and this is, these are initial studies that we're performing right now. So after that model validation study, uh, we uh, considered a large uh, warehouse system. Here you can see the floor area, uh, 1,800 meters square. Um, the floor height, uh, the height of the system, the uh, the growing ratio is about 72 uh, percent. We have we are considering 48 heads per meter square plant density, and we wanted to know how would the uh, consumption of energy would be or resource use efficiency in different climatic locations. Uh, here we have Dulet, um, um and Phoenix in Seattle and Miami. 
and these are unique uh, um, climatic zones, uh, cold, very cold or hot, dry, cold, moderate, as well as hot and humid climate. So the outdoor environments would have an effect in terms of energy consumption, obviously, um, uh, as well as the, the factors, actually, the set points that we consider uh, internally within the uh, production uh, system. So there are some inputs we need to consider uh, using this uh, software, as you can see. In this case, our base uh, uh, case is Phoenix, hot and dry environment. We have some construction related uh, for the uh, insulating materials. Level of production is 11 shelves. Uh, we have air conditioning unit with a coefficient of performance of 395, 345. And we considered 14 DLI. Uh, here is the photo period. And as you can see, we consider uh, some of the um, LED lighting uh, features, uh, the radiant energy, uh, the, the PAR portion, as well as the convective uh, heat portion, as well as we consider uh, um, the, uh, uh, the lattice uh, transpiration rates in the, uh, in the, in the uh, model as well. So we were interested in um, uh, in different uh, set points for photo period and dark period. Here we evaluated three different scenarios, 23 degrees C photo period, 19 degrees C uh, dark period temperatures. And here's the different, the, here's the second case and the third case, elevated actual temperatures for photo period and reduced uh, uh, nighttime uh, temperatures. Um, and uh, for different locations, as you can see, uh, these set points have uh, they have an effect on the yield uh, um, because of uh, uh, pushing the plant out of their optimal uh, condition set points. Uh, 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 but uh, we were interested in also uh, uh, finding out how much uh, uh, energy uh, consumption would be associated by considering these set points. As you can see, um, the 2319 uh, uh, set points were the most uh, optimal when we consider the electrical use uh, efficiency for any given location. This is because uh, of the, uh, the amount of yield actually reduced relative to the, the consumption, the energy uh, that was uh, consumed. Um, so in the next few slides, we are actually trying to really um, uh, consider several uh, uh, operational uh, features to see if we can ha achieve any savings. Here, uh, we were interested in actually pushing the photo period uh, to different times of the day, considering that uh, during different times of the day in a given location, um, maybe we can take advantage of the outdoor conditions in terms of the cooling and heating uh, needs. So uh, uh, in this case, as you can see, um, switching from 6 a.m. to uh, 10 p.m., Photo period, uh, we, we considered um, uh, pushing that to 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. midnight. Uh, 1 uh, a.m. midnight, uh, you can see the energy consumption um, uh, here versus um, the um, the uh, photo period being between 6 p.m. and 10 a.m. Uh, in the morning. So during the nighttime, when it's colder, we have um, a heat. Uh, uh, rejected from the LED lighting system, which can be actually advantageous to provide the heating needed during that cold period. As you can see, uh, by switching the photo period between these two scenarios, two cases, you can see the amount of uh, energy saved uh, in this uh, not even uh, large scale uh, facility. Another um, feature we wanted to, scenario we want to evaluate uh, was the uh, daily light integral. So what if we actually reduce dim the lights a little bit um, and, and sacrificing from the yield, as you can see here, between different set points and different daily light integrals, as well as the uh, electrical energy use. In this case, uh, we have not actually conducted the other two scenarios for the electrical use efficiency, just took the 2319 uh, set point uh, feature here. As you can see, uh, uh, the dimming of the light actually helps us to achieve, uh, um, to, uh, to use less energy for a given amount of uh, fresh produce um, as a, a fresh produce. 
So these are the types of uh, actual analyses we can we can perform uh, to to uh, to to see the outcome and maybe consider this uh, um, in the in in a given location or in a given production system. Um, there are other things that we can actually consider. For example, uh, what if we can uh, change or have an, a, a little bit more efficient uh, 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 air conditioning unit with a higher coefficient of performance? So in this case, we just looked at uh, 3.45, which is the base scenario, versus 4.5 coefficient of performance. And as you can see, we have some savings um, because of that improved uh, performance or the efficiency of the uh, air conditioning uh, system. So we are continuing these analyses to look at different uh, features. Light, lighting system efficiency, another feature that, uh, uh, that can be evaluated as the LED lighting technology is advancing. Uh, in our uh, base case, we consider the power fraction to be 0.36-36%. Here we are considering about 11% improvement as you can see, the uh, electrical use efficiency is actually improved as you consider this improvement for the lighting system uh, efficiency. Um, here I switch to another study that we conducted uh, looking into the light intensity versus the CO2 enhancement. So we can actually consider these two variable to achieve savings, either um, increasing the light intensity uh, using less CO2 versus light, dimming the light and maybe enhancing the CO2 uh, uh, levels uh, could give or could result uh, similar yields in the, uh, in the production uh, system. Um, here the consideration of course should be which uh, scenario or which action would be uh, less costly or would bring more savings uh, uh, when we consider the operational operational costs. Here, uh, Brian Kaplan did research with six different light intensities, uh, DLIs, considering DLIs, uh, as well as six different CO2 levels. You're, you can see the... Um, the hey, um, sorry, just interrupting you. Um, I wanted to finish maybe mm -hmm. in four or five minutes, if you okay. can wrap sure. up. Um, then just going through real quickly here, we have six different light intensities, as you can see, ranging from 9 to 19 DLI, uh, uh, as well as uh, ambient CO2s up to 1300 uh, ppm uh, levels. So total of 36 uh, treatments we have, uh, and you can see uh, we uh, documented the tip burn occurrences at the higher daily light integral levels. Um, and with elevated CO2s, we were observing more uh, tip burn issues with the crop, but between 9 and 13, any given CO2 levels, we were not actually uh, seeing any tip burn issues uh, in, this, in this experiment. Uh, when we look at the data on the daily light integral versus the fresh weight, um, the results of this experiment gave us uh, um, the, uh, uh, the uh, 0.15 moles per gram fresh, fresh weight. That means that uh, this is the amount of power light needed to increase actually one gram of fresh weight uh, yield of the lettuce crop that we, that we used. And this is kind of comparable with the numbers that we see from other, actually other colleagues or in the literature. Um, so coming to the really the, the results of his research um, here, uh, really to focusing on the uh, electrical use efficiency, as you can see in terms of kilograms of yield per kilogram, kilowatts hours of energy used, um, you can see we are able to achieve <clears throat> a similar uh, electrical use efficiency uh, when we consider different daily light integrals, meaning that we can actually dim the light. Yes, we would maybe sacrifice from the yield, but the savings from that electricity or the energy cost uh, would be maybe favorable for us to uh, achieve lower um, 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 uh, uh, production cost, uh, operational cost in the production space. Of course, we should consider the market expectations in terms of the quality expected, uh, because we observed that high light intensities were give, uh, yielding, uh, resulting compact and heavier versus lower light intensities uh, were actually uh, uh, leading to large or lighter uh, 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 qualities uh, with the crop. Considering all the factors evaluated, all the fresh weight and the, uh, the amount of resources used and the tip burn issues, uh, this uh, experiment showed us that about 850 parts per 
a million ppm levels of CO2 with DLIs ranging from 11 to 13 would be a desirable actually set point. Um, in addition to these um, uh, studies, we are also considering to monitor the crop in real time um, with, with uh, camera systems to quantify maybe the growth, uh, growth features and maybe health conditions of the plant, uh, considering that they could be maybe an uh, integral part of, they could become an integral part of the uh, control systems or environmental control applications as we look at future environmental control systems. So here we are looking at canopy coverage, for example, percentage, and some of the health-related issues with the crop canopy. So as I look at the future, um, I think uh, we will see um, some uh, improvements and some technology advancing when it comes to lighting systems and resource conserving control strategies, engineering these systems, improving their designs uh, with Internet of Things applications, and maybe considering uh, uh, AI as maybe some uh, uh, helping with the environmental controls. Uh, I don't mean to replace the operator or grower, but I am referring to a technology platform that can actually enable the grower with meaningful information that we can have uh, some improved environmental control applications and resource savings. Of course, the, the, the plant uh, phenome, genome, and environmental analysis would also help us to improve uh, uh, the production and uh, profitability of the uh, indoor agriculture systems. Um, another uh, important uh, factor will be the automation and robotics because labor is another major challenge when it comes to not only the vertical farming systems, but also other types of control and control environment agriculture systems. So um, this is my presentation. I just want to close saying, uh, sharing this information with you about upcoming uh, events. Uh, so we will be organizing an indoor agriculture uh, uh, workshop in September. This is a USDA NIFA funded conference, a planning actual grant. So if you're interested in joining us um, uh, for discussions or becoming a partner for a research proposal, please consider joining us. Uh, there will be more information coming out uh, uh, in the coming weeks or months. Uh, another uh, event that we are organizing is the Verde Farm uh, 2019 in Wageningen uh, with Leo Marcellis and uh, Francisco Orsini. This will be the first international workshop on vertical farming. And I also encourage you to consider in 2020 the lighting symposium that will be in uh, Sweden. There are other greenhouse events as well um, and uh, uh, on this slide. Um, but we will be organizing our um, NC. NCERA, NCERA 101 meeting. This is the Committee on Controlled Environment Technology and Use um, in March 2020 here in Arizona. We are really excited about it. Um, so please consider joining us uh, for, the, for this event as well. So with that, thank you so much. Um, I don't know if we have some time. I will be happy to uh, join a discussion with you. Great. Thank you, Mura, so much for a lot of information. <laughs> <laughs> but I did. So let me stop recording here. You, you can unshare the screen. Yeah.